Hey, Brian Thomas here. Got an interesting video, and this could be kind of a controversial video. What I mean by that is we're going to be testing the tension of the blade or the stretch of the blade on a Timber King 2020 sawmill. If you've got a 2020 sawmill or above, you should have this hydraulic gauge right here. So what this does is as you tighten up the actual machine and the, the blade and everything, you'll see that pressure start to go up and it reads on here pounds per square inch and stuff like that. But what does that actual number equate to uh, when you're looking at the tension of the blade? Timmer King recommends that you put your sawmill at about 1100 PSI. So about that line right there, 1100 PSI is what I always tell people. That's what I run my blade at. It's worked very well for me over the years. If we look at the actual mechanism here, you have this big long handle here, which has a screw and you got a spring here because you definitely want to spring there. It gives you some play. If this was bottomed out, if it was a hard fix connection, there would be no play to it, but having a spring is a good thing. That spring or that screw goes through to this block right here. This block right here is attached to this assembly that slides between these two bars right here. And as we tighten up, you're going to be looking right there. As we tighten up, you will see things start to move. So see that area start to move, the screw goes through. What you're doing is you're adding more and more pressure and you're also tensioning up your blade. As you can see, we got slightly over 500 PSI there. As I detension, we should see that close back off. And then really, if we're going to change out a blade, we push that over completely and you can change out your blade. So this is your moving piece right here from how tight you tighten this screw. Again, very important the way this is set up, how this is set up here is it's pulling from the center of the axle that holds the wheel. So we're gonna go to the other side here a second. So this right here, imagine this being an axle. We are pulling from the dead center of this wheel right here. This is a 9 diameter wheel and everything, same size that uh, Woodmiser runs on their LT40s and stuff like that. I'm not sure about their LT50, I'll have to look. But this whole wheel right here travels in and out to allow for in, to allow for blade, um, change out and stuff like that, out to tension it up. So, when we read 1100 PSI on the gauge, what are we actually seeing? That's what we're here to find out. And to help us with that, we have this Linux tension meter. This tension meter is one meter that's out there. There are multiple ones out there from different manufacturers. This is just one that I found on Zorro.com. And by no way am I affiliated or sponsored with any of these folks or anything. This is just something that's kind of piqued my interest as well as a few of my other friends' interests. And we're going to do a collaborative video in the future where we talk about different gauges and what the pressures are reading on different sawmills. And that's where it's going to be kind of contentious because we run this Timber King sawmill at 1100 PSI. Woodmiser, they run their sawmills per the gauge um, close to 3000 PSI. And I believe Cooks does as well. But we're gonna really look into what does that actually mean on blade tension and is, is there any difference? And in order to check that, you have to have a, a device such as this. This device only measures in one direction. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So. You've got a fixed point on this side right here. You've got a movable point on this side. As this portion moves, you'll see that dial indicator change because that's moving out that way. Again, fixed location. If you tighten this down here, you tighten it down here, you put it on a, um, a blade that has no tension on it. As you tension it up, it should measure the stretch. The way that this holds onto the blade, it's kind of interesting. Uh, you've got these little, they're like little nipples in there. The bottom one is a fixed one. The top one, as you see with the thumb screw, ties down there. Again, when you put this on here, you're going to put this on the blade, on the back side of the blade, not on the tooth side. We're going to show that here in a second. And you'll go ahead and zero out, um, and we'll show that how you turn the face of a dial indicator. Very simple um, setup. It's amazing how much this piece of machinery costs here, this tool here, uh, but it is a precise tool that measures a precise thing. So. Let's go ahead and head over to the sawmill here onto this blade and we'll go ahead and put this on. 
Again, the blade is at zero PSI and there is slack in it. It just shows you zero PSI on this gauge right here and there is slack in the blade. All right, let's go ahead and add this machine on. Okay, so I have this zoomed in on the blade and everything. But again, here's our tension meter. To zero it out, it's quite simple. You've got this thumb screw right here. You kind of loosen this up and it allows you to move this dial, the face of the dial and everything. We're gonna go ahead and get it close to zero. It's pretty close right there. Now we're gonna go ahead and put it on the actual blade. The way I like to tighten these up and everything, always do your fixed end first. And then you're going to go ahead and do your movable end and trying to do it as gently as you can to not, you know, mess with the dial indicator here. If it does move, that's fine. We can go ahead and zero it out on the machine. It's not going to hurt anything, but it's, it's always best to start as clean as possible. All right. So we've got slit on there. As you can see, I'm on the back side of the blade here. If I did on the two side, it really wouldn't help me out because I've got teeth there. We're going to go ahead and tighten down on this side pretty tight. I'm going to snug it up pretty tight. Now you see the gauge was moving. It's because as I was doing that, it was moving the uh, uh, the movable portion a little bit. It appears that it's still zeroed. I have to get directly over it to see it. We're going to go ahead and gently tighten this down and then snug it up. And there you have it. So now the gauge is on there. Get some bark out of the way. It's a little bit closer. Okay, so gauge is on there. Now I've got to get her zeroed in. Exactly, and it's it's close, but I think the camera is giving a little bit of slight angle difference. Right there. I'm gonna call that zeroed in right there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tension up the blade itself. Again, make sure everything's snug. Okay, nice and snug. Let's go and tension up. I'll call out 500,000, 1100 PSI, see where we're at. Okay, so they're starting some tension on. That's 500 PSI there. About 750 there. That's a thousand right there. And that is 1100 right there. So 1100 PSI is reading about a 15,000 PSI on the gauge here. So now that we've seen that, we know how much tension is in the blade. If I back this um, screw off here, if I back the pressure off, it should go back to zero. Hopefully. If it doesn't go back to zero, maybe we can try it again, but I'm thinking it's going to go back to zero. It should. Let's tape that back. And that's back to zero right there. It's still showing a little bit on the gauge. Let me give it a little tap. It's showing a little on the gauge, so maybe there was a little bit of movement. Well, no, it's it's off by a little bit. Let's try that again. And actually, so look at that. As I twist the blade, it changes. That's interesting. Let's go ahead and set this to zero about right there. And let's go ahead and do it again. One second. Kids came outside, they're screaming as usual. 500 PSI. So 750, 1000, and 1100 PSI. And we're reading roughly about the same. So that's just showing just shy of 15,000 there. Let's take it back one more time. And uh, showing zero, so that's good. And let's do it one last time, just to verify three different. Now, if I really wanted to be smart, I guess I could I could change it. So let's go ahead and change this up. 
slightly different location. Not by much, let's go this way. Again, you just wanna make sure we can validate what the instrument is reading. Okay, looks pretty good there. We'll tighten it up again. Five hundred, seven fifty, one thousand, and love a hundred. It's reading kind of about where it was that that second time, so just under fifteen thousand. So there you have it. That's about what we're running. Now let's go a little bit further and just see, this is a single spring that I have here on my tensioning device. Let's go up to about the max I'd run a blade, which is say 1400 PSI and see what that equates to. Okay, that's 1400 PSI right there. Looks like it's reading just, just uh, let's say it's about 18.5, 18, 18, something like that, uh, 1,000 PSI. That's not too shabby. That's a good taunt blade. That's about the, the, the most I'll run a blade, especially if I'm running a 55,000 or something like that. The blade I have on here is a 41,000, so I can actually see it stamped on there or etched in there. It's an inch and a quarter blade, 41,000 thickness, and uh, yeah, there you have it. So I'm going to validate this on the next video with an additional um, tension device, which is the wood miser one. And the wood miser one can measure both directions. This measures in one direction, but it measures more precisely in one direction. And I'll show that in the next video. But this right here shows you that when you're on a Timber King sawmill, you've got an inch and a quarter blade, you tighten up to 1100 psi or 1400 psi you're somewhere between say 13 to 18,000 psi on the blade that's pretty interesting data right there and what we're going to do is we're also going to create a chart that shows you so if people don't have uh, this gauge right here we can kind of show you what different blades do and we're going to try it on different sawmills too to show you what's the difference between different sawmills and what the gauge reads and what the actual um, tension meter reads and we're going to go ahead and do a chart all that out all that data and it'll be very interesting at the very end all right please like subscribe we'll see you around thanks for nerding out with me